Daniel Cormier called it a career after his heartbreaking UFC 252 loss to Stipe Miocic. DC drew the curtains on his legendary run in mixed martial arts in a characteristically subdued interview, in which he gave credit to his heavyweight title opponent and talked about his drive to win championships. Cormier will leave the UFC as one of the greatest fighters in history, but he also leaves with a complicated legacy, one I've been debating about in my head for years. What will be our lasting memory of Daniel Cormier? And is he retiring as the greatest mixed martial artist in history? Let's discuss. Yeah. Look, watching sports is hard in the lockdown era. Even for those of us who follow our sports very closely and know all the storylines before the first whistle or the opening bell, we still subconsciously rely on the fans to let us know when the moment is biggest. And that was a real downer during the UFC 252 main event, because that should have felt like one of, if not the biggest fights of the year. Instead, we were treated to silence, as one of the greatest fighters in history stepped into the octagon for what we believe to be the final time. It was not the way DC should have stepped out for several reasons. Daniel Cormier is damn near impossible to dislike, unless your name is John Jones, we'll get to him later. For the rest of us, since we've come to know DC, however you found out about him, you came to know a person who appears as friendly and jovial outside the cage as he does singularly focused and ruthless inside it. He captured the hearts and minds of fans with his unique look and style, as well as his infectious personality. He captivated hardcore fighting nerds with his world-class wrestling while entertaining even casual watchers at the commentary desk. All of this is to say, before we even get into his fighting accomplishments, Cormier has ingratiated himself to fans for years and leaves as maybe the most well-respected and well-liked fighter in UFC history. In a time of larger-than-life, controversial personalities like John Jones, Conor McGregor, and Colby Covington, Cormier stood out as a genuine human being. And in the heaviest weight classes that feature seemingly mythical characters like the Iceman, the Beast, and Bones, Cormier didn't need an alter ego to assert his personality. And the case for Cormier being the greatest mixed martial artist of all time gets even better when you actually get to his fighting achievements. Cormier was a stellar amateur wrestler, two-time junior college national champion, Division I All-American, five-time senior U.S. national champion, and two-time Olympian. He began his mixed martial arts career with Strike Force, where he became the heavyweight Grand Prix champion after beating professional grown man intimidator Josh Barnett. For those who don't know, the Strike Force Heavyweight Grand Prix was considered maybe the greatest competition of heavyweight fighters ever, featuring some of the baddest men in the history of the sport. Fedor Emelianenko, Bigfoot Silva, and Fabrizio Verdum were just some of the men who took part in that tournament. Cormier began his UFC career as a heavyweight, quickly defied the odds and dropped down to light heavyweight. He actually missed the 2008 Olympics after suffering from kidney failure connected to a bad weight cut. He won the light heavyweight title less than a year after his first fight in the division and held the belt for the better part of five years. He became just the second person to hold two UFC championships simultaneously, and he did it by beating maybe the greatest heavyweight in history in Stipe Miocic. More on him later. He presumably ends his MMA career as a UFC light heavyweight champion with three successful defenses, a UFC heavyweight champion with one successful defense, 2018 ESPN Fighter of the Year, and he became the first man to ever successfully defend titles in two different weight classes. He boasts wins over legends like Stipe Miocic, Anderson Silva, Dan Henderson, Frank Mir, and Bigfoot Silva. Based on his accomplishments alone, you could call him the greatest to ever do it. Combine that with his brutal yet entertaining style, his propensity for finishing fights in a variety of ways, and his aforementioned lovable personality, you've got a guy who was basically created in a lab to be called the GOAT. But there is more to the story. No discussion of Daniel Cormier can be had without talking about his most bitter rival, John Bones Jones. For six years, these two had a highly public rivalry based not off of contrivance or mutual respect, but full-on animosity and hatred for the other. 
For each man, the other represented everything wrong with the UFC and sport of mixed martial arts. But it's so fake. Thanks. John Jones, he's a fake individual. He's a fake person. And I'm going to beat him up on September 27th. You know, his ego and his pride was just through the roof. And uh, he took it way out of context, way out of, uh, and it made it this huge personal thing. And ever since then, he's had this personal vendetta against me. For Cormier in particular, he had spent his whole career battling his own body. Injuries had derailed so many of his potential big fights. His body literally tried to kill him for cutting weight and cost him his opportunity to captain Team USA at the Olympics. Meanwhile, here's John Jones, chiseled from marble, the type of physical frame great sculptors couldn't even dream of. He is the greatest athlete in the history of the sport. His right hand could knock out an elephant and he could put a bear to sleep in a rear naked choke. But his antics and poor personality choices could cost him the opportunity to be considered the greatest to ever do it. But the problem when you attach yourself and your career so entirely to a feud like this, and when that feud happens to be against the man many consider to be the most talented fighter ever, any discussion of your career cannot happen without talking about that very feud. And unfortunately for Cormier, he lost. At UFC 182 in 2015, Jones beat his blood rival by unanimous decision. It was considered one of the fights of the year. It took two and a half years for the two to meet again. In that time, Jones was stripped of his light heavyweight belt, which Cormier then won. The vacation of the belt was due to felony charges stemming from a traffic accident in 2015. The war of words between the two continued and, if anything, escalated. The match was finally made for UFC 214 in Anaheim. Jones knocked DC out. Cormier publicly stated after the fight, quote, there is no rivalry in an emotional post-fight interview. I don't know, man, I guess if you win both fights, there is no rivalry, so I, I don't know. But as if this story needed any more drama, almost a month later, USADA announced it had flagged one of John Jones's test samples from just after the weigh-ins for that fight with Cormier. In September, after extensive investigation, USADA confirmed Jones tested positive for oral terinabol, an anabolic steroid famous for its heavy use by East German athletes in the 70s and 80s. Jones was stripped of his light heavyweight belt, the Cormier match was changed to a no contest, and DC was awarded the championship, which incidentally is why the UFC only recognizes one light heavyweight championship reign for Daniel Cormier. But before we even get to his complicated legacy because of, because of the Jones feud, we have to talk about his trilogy with Stipe Miocic. Those two rivalries are connected more than it seems on the surface. Cormier made his intentions clear in 2018. He was going to step up and fight for the heavyweight championship, the most prized possession in all of combat sports. The heavyweight champ at the time was Stipe Miocic, basically the polar opposite of John Jones. Miocic was a hard-working, soft-spoken, blue-collar fireman from Cleveland who grinded his way to becoming champion. Cormier's rivalry with Stipe was based in mutual respect, and they made that clear from the off. In their first fight at UFC 226 in 2018, Cormier knocked out the champ in one round, becoming the second person to hold two UFC championships simultaneously. A few months later, DC became the first man to defend both of those belts, beating Derek Lewis at UFC 230. But as with the Jones feud, Cormier's rivalry with Stipe gets more complicated. In the UFC, it's so rare to have a true series. So often you have to judge whether one fighter is better than another based off of one fight. And we all know just one mistake, one slip up, one oversight in training can cost you a fight in the UFC. But DC and Stipe got their rematch. Just over a year after their first encounter, Stipe avenged his loss, beating DC by TKO in the fourth round to regain the heavyweight title. And then they got a third. The rubber match and a rivalry between two of the all-time greats, a phenomenon so rarely observed in the UFC whereby we get as definitive of an answer as we can hope for. Who is the better fighter? Stipe won by decision. When you look at Daniel Cormier's career in total, you see accomplishments that would not only land him in the UFC Hall of Fame, but would probably get him on the hypothetical Mount Rushmore of UFC fighters. But you also find losses against his two greatest rivals. In his one clean fight with John Jones, he lost. 
but then Jones took steroids ahead of their rematch. So that certainly shouldn't count against him, but you still have that first loss to think about. DC only won his first UFC title because Jones got himself in trouble and had it forcibly taken outside of the cage. Would Cormier have ever won that belt if Jones had stayed clean? He beat Stipe Miocic once, but in the best of three, Stipe won without controversy. John Jones is already being called the most talented, if not the greatest, pound-for-pound -pound fighter in UFC history by experts like Joe Rogan and Brett Okamoto. Those same men are calling Stipe Miocic the greatest heavyweight fighter in UFC history. So where does that leave Daniel Cormier? One clean loss to Jones, one clean win over Stipe, two clean losses to Stipe. It feels like he's the odd man out here, just not quite good enough to overcome the single challenge that stood in his way in either division. Really, that's been the story of his whole career. In college, Cormier lost the national championship his senior year to Chael Sanderson, a bona fide legend of American wrestling. His strike force career was marred by injuries, both his own and his competitors, preventing him from truly testing himself against the best that promotion had to offer. The story of DC's athletic career will be the story of number one and number one A, the legend who came at the wrong time, the man who could have beat any other fighter at any other time, but not Jones and not Miocic. But there is something uplifting here. This video is not designed for me to tell you that Daniel Cormier will be forgotten, lost to the annals of history, while Jones and Miocic are crowned goats forever. It's actually precisely the opposite. I believe Cormier will be remembered as long and as well, if not more so, than Bones and Stipe. DC will go down as the shining star of what it means to be a UFC fighter. He didn't just excel in the cage, he excelled out of it. He was a good person, quick-witted and funny, endlessly knowledgeable with boundless charisma. While Jones slid into the easy role of being a villain, one he took to quite well by the way, and Stipe was content to slide entirely out of the public eye, DC took the middle ground. He was the good guy, a genuine human being that you couldn't even try to dislike. He coaches high school wrestling, he's helped train dozens of fighters at various gyms, he's given inspirational and motivational talks about his windy road to UFC stardom. While Daniel Cormier's octagon accomplishments may be overshadowed in time by John Jones and Stipe Miocic, who he was as a man, what he meant to the fans and the fight game in general will never be. And if you're a DC fan, that's the greatest thing you can ask for. While debates can be had until the heat death of the universe about Cormier's status as the greatest physical fighter of all time, and if you want to have those, head on down to the comments, when the debate comes to impasse, at least every party can agree that Daniel Cormier was genuinely one of the best human beings the UFC has ever seen.